I told you guys to get juicy. I didn't know we were gonna get this juicy. Am I single? Am I seeing someone? Am I secretly seeing someone? Gym crush updates, all the things about my love life. Is, is there anything we don't know about you that we should? Yes. One, two, three. Okay guys, it is finally happening. My very first YouTube video slash the tutorial you all have been asking for, how I curl my hair, which it honestly just cracks me up that people ask me this question because I feel like when I'm curling my hair, it's not anything special, but you guys ask me all the time. So I figured that'll be a perfect chance to do a little hair tutorial. I also asked you guys some questions um, just like what you want to know so I can just answer those while we're doing my hair, do a little get to know you, but oh, happy first YouTube video. Okay, so I have all these saved on my phone. I screenshotted them. Um, I told you guys to get juicy. I didn't know we were going to get this juicy. So buckle up. I think we're going to start off easy and then maybe work my way up to spilling the tea. Speaking of tea, um, I talked about this in one of my TikToks, but I am like kind of over coffee. Um, like I love hot coffee and I think I thought it could be an iced coffee girl. I used to be a big iced coffee girl, but now I'm kind of like just not loving it. I don't love the taste, but like, I don't enjoy drinking it as much. So I've switched to tea. I'm trying this um, energy tea from Celestial Seasonings. It has, much, it has as much caffeine as a cup of coffee and it's freaking delicious. This is my second cup of the day. So if I seem a little wild, it's because I am. Okay, so before I answer any questions, hair, let's get into the deets on that. Um, I am such a basic girl. I don't, I'm not one of those people that has like a million products they put in their hair. I literally barely do anything to it. And don't yell at me because I'm not going to use heat protectant because I don't typically use heat protectant. Um, but my hair, it's fine. It's not falling out. Um, first of all, I have so much freaking hair. So I typically do my hair in sections, in three sections. So the curling iron that I use is the Kristen S one inch wand. I will link this in my LTK for you. That is linked in both of my Instagram bio and my TikTok bio so you can shop it. I live and die by this thing. I mean, you can see she's in like, let's see if I can get her, just her. Oh, the hand. <laughs> she's in pretty rough shape. Um, I use the one inch barrel. I swear by it. I have tried, like my sister uses like one and a half inch barrel and it is just too big for my hair. I think it doesn't give me the same amount of curls. So. Three sections, Kristen S, Kristen S, one inch curling iron. And yes, it's a curling iron, not a wand. I ain't about to burn my fingers. And then you're just gonna take little sections like this and twist, hold, pull down, twist back up a little bit to where you pulled it off of, hold, pull down, just like that, all the way around your head. I curl away from my face every single time I don't switch it. And then when it comes out, your curl will look a little something like that. Don't touch it until it's completely cool. So I'm just gonna keep doing that around my head and answer some questions. First question, dream job. What is my dream job? Whew, that's a really good question. So I mean, I honestly, this is a question I get a lot um, or a similar question, like what do I do? So I am a marketing manager for a clothing company. And if you would have told me when I was younger that I would work for a clothing company, I'd actually probably giggle because I'm, not that I don't have like good fashion, but if you see how I'm dressed today, let me stand up. Like, this is how I prefer to dress. I'm literally in sweat shorts, I'm wearing slippers and a sweatshirt. Like this is my preferred outfit. I'm just not like an overly fancy stylish girl. And so I, and this is how I dress to work too, which is even the funnier part because you would think working in clothes, I would have like, or I would dress maybe a little bit nicer. Um, but we're just allowed to wear whatever we want, which is the biggest blessing. So yeah, that's like a little bit about what I do. That's a question I get a lot. Um, and it's so much fun. Like the people I work with are absolutely amazing. It's so cool to see like all the clothes come in, obviously. I feel like a lot of my wardrobe um, for like my nicer clothes, um, AKA anything that's not a sweatshirt and sweatpants is from there. Um, so yeah, I am a marketing manager for that, which means I just come up with a lot of strategies and run a lot of numbers for the store. Do, I used to do a lot more social media content, um, but we have someone that does all that now. So I pretty much just, I feel like I'm a big delegator. I come up with strategies and then delegate to my team um, what we need to get done for the week. So that's like what I do. Um, and it's an amazing job, like so amazing. So I guess for me, it's hard to say what is my dream job. 
I feel like if I could pick anything, um, I really, really, really would love to get into like property management, like not apartments or anything, but I would love to like buy and flip houses and turn them into Airbnbs and like manage the Airbnbs. I think that would be so fun. Like I have absolutely loved decorating and designing my house, but now I'm like kind of done. Like everything is exactly how I want it. So I'm like itching to start a new project, but obviously that takes a ton of capital and I'm not super handy. So I would need like a handy person. So yeah, that would be 100% my dream job though, is like owning, managing, designing, all the things with flipping properties and Airbnbs. Okay, a lot of questions in here about like workouts. How did I get started? What was my lifestyle like before training with Sydney? Um, my starting weight, all of that. So I'll kind of answer all of those. Um, starting off with my lifestyle before I started training with Sydney. So I was really big into working out like about a year ago and I kind of fell off and I'll get into that a little bit later. But I would say my lifestyle before training with Sydney was I, so I get to work around eight o'clock and I would wake up at 7.20, 7.30, roll out of bed, barely get ready, throw on basically the same outfit. My outfits have not changed. Um, but just something super comfy and casual and roll the door. And then I'm not kidding you, there was times after work where I would come home, I get home around four and I would just lay on the couch and watch TV, which granted, I still definitely do that sometimes, but I was maybe going to walk with Mila two to three times a week. Um, but literally, I bet I would get in less than 3,000 steps a day. And now I'm getting like 12-ish on a regular day. But I just honestly didn't do much. And I would go out on the weekends and I would drink and I would feel like crap. And then we would do that all over again. And I would feel like I need the entire week after work to just like recover and recoup. So I was like not super proud of my lifestyle. I think it was a little bit, not depressed, but just like kind of in a slump. Um, at that point in my life too, I just like had recently moved to Sioux Falls and like didn't really feel like home. Like I was wanting to go home a lot on the weekends and see my parents because I just didn't have a ton of friends here. So yeah, my lifestyle before training with Sid was not ideal. I honestly didn't feel like I was, I was um, alive. I wasn't properly <laughs> living. And I think like starting to work out really helped me because it forced me to get into some kind of routine. So next question, how did you decide to do morning workouts and going to bed at eight works best for me versus like kind of the flip of that? Honestly, it started off with gym anxiety. I went to the gym the first time. So I joined my gym last year with a friend and we would work out at night. And when I, we would walk into that gym at like six o'clock and I was like, this is so chaotic. Like I'm nervous to even try any machines. There's so many people in here. Like I don't feel comfortable. Like I would go on the elliptical and then just leave because it was the only thing like I knew how to do. And I was comfortable just like walking and getting on and leaving. So honestly for me, working out in the morning started with a lot of gym anxiety. I tried it once and I was like, oh my gosh, there's like half the amount of people here. I love this. Um, and then two, I kind of stuck with that because I feel like there's so many excuses you can use after work. Like I'm tired, I had a bad day. I wish I could get X, Y, and Z done. Like I'm not gonna wake up at 4.30 in the morning and mow my lawn, but I need to do that after work. So there was just always so many excuses for me on like, hmm, I, maybe I won't work out today because X and I won't do that because Y. And it was just, there's a lot less excuses for me in the morning because the only excuse was I'm tired. And that one's easier, I feel like, for me to like, okay, suck it up, you can do it. Best tips on getting started. I so personally need something to motivate me. Um, for me, it was like summer and knowing I was gonna be going to the lake a lot, which obviously the only reason to work out isn't like looking good, but it's, a pretty big proponent of it. It makes you feel good. Um, so for me, it was like summer's coming around. I know I'm gonna be at the lake a lot. Um, so I had looked into training with Sydney and I got so freaking lucky and blessed that the first time I tried, I was able to get in with her. Oops, not tea. Um, so yeah, I just knew summer was coming up. I knew I was just kind of starting to feel like I was in a slump. I had just gone through a breakup pretty recently before trying to sign up with Sid. So that was a really another big motivating factor with me. But I say find your reason and find your why. That really helped me get started and like helped me keep going too. Biggest tip on being consistent in my fitness journey. This has been a struggle for me because if you know me personally, you know that I am like an all or nothing kind of girl, um, which is I feel like a blessing and a curse. When I do something new, I am 100% all in. Like me, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start YouTube. I buy a whole camera and like buy this whole setup and like 
all these things like I don't half ass anything and I think that's amazing but also it's kind of like really quick way to burn yourself out is to like try something new run out at 100 miles an hour it's easier to give up and so I think the biggest tip on being consistent is like giving yourself grace um the first eight weeks I would say I was like damn near perfect and that is obviously not sustainable at all and I talked about this on TikTok last week too and with Sydney in my check-in but like I struggled the week after Memorial Day weekend because I'd been eating kind of the same thing over and over and over. And the Memorial Day weekend came and I'm like, okay, I'm at the lake, I'm with family, I'm with friends. I'm gonna give myself some grace here. And I was eating all these new foods and it was, it felt so stinking exciting. And then I went back and like tried to eat like my normal routine food. And I was like, I don't want this. I don't wanna make it. I don't wanna eat it. And so like that whole week, I pretty, pretty much just ate out. I didn't like go crazy and eat like Burger King, McDonald's, but I like went and got Chipotle twice. And obviously that's like, okay, on my macros and I still kind of tracked it, but like, that's just not also not sustainable because you can't spend $17 on Chipotle every day. So I would say for me, the biggest tip on being consistent is give yourself that variety, but also cut yourself a break. You do need to be human. You do need to socialize. You do need to go out and you can't always be 100% strict. Okay, a question about my house. Did I rent or buy my house? So I bought my house in July of 2021. Um, it was honestly such a situation. So I was living in a townhouse and I had amazing neighbors and I didn't, I wouldn't say I loved it, but it was like fine. And then my neighbors moved out and a new couple moved in and along with them moving in came like a five foot subwoofer which if you're not familiar with that, it's a giant speaker. And the guy would, um, he was like a nurse or something. So he had weird hours. We'd so like work days or nights and it was flipping. And I worked from home a lot then. And he would play video games connected to that subwoofer all day and all night. And I cannot tell you the amount of anxiety that gave me, like never knowing if I was gonna be able to fall asleep or like be on a conference call without like hearing like, woo, woo, woo. So I looked at my mom and I was like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to buy a house because I need to get out of this lease. So I met with a real estate agent and we started looking in January of 2021. And I found this house in March of 2021. And it was honestly just the perfect situation. If you're familiar with the real estate market then, like it was a freaking crazy bidding war. Like I had bid on several houses and there was like 18 to 20 offers on those houses. So when I got this one, they were um, only listing within the brokerage that I was in and working with. So there was like no competition. I put in my offer, I put in asking, and here we are. And I could not love it more. It like seriously fell into my lap. Um, and then my sister moved in with me and she lives with me too. So she has a room here, I own the house and she lives with me. Okay, I love this question too. We're gonna, this will be the last question before we really get into the tea because I'm reading through these and I'm like, oh my gosh, all these questions are the same. And I kind of had a feeling we were gonna go there but I didn't know if you guys would be bold enough to ask, but you are. Last question before I get into that is, how do you stay motivated to share on your socials? So this is so funny. I grew up, I feel like, um, I don't know. I've always just been, kind of been social media savvy. I've always loved it, but I was always too afraid to share on my social media. Like I, this is my freaking dream. Like having a TikTok account with all of you guys on it and getting to share things I love and like communicate with you and now making YouTube videos. Like this is a freaking dream I've had forever. And I've always just been too nervous to share. And I think it's because like, and I've had people message me about this too. Like people judging me, like who do you think you are? Like, why are you sharing this? Why are you doing this? Like you're no one special. And so um, I feel like for me, I was like, always looking for a reason to share on social media, but I didn't know how to share who I was in like a super authentic way without literally just feeling like I was copying other creators. Um, and so when I started training with Sydney right before I was like, I think I'm gonna share this. Like for some reason, I just feel like this could be kind of cool. I had looked at TikTok and obviously Sydney shares a lot, but I hadn't seen anybody like share their journey with her. And I was like, that's something I'm interested in. Um, I don't know if anybody else is, but I know I searched TikTok for it. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to share. It's something that's kind of easy for me to like know what I'm going to share each day. Um, I will say 
like right away I was so motivated to share but like it is getting a little bit more difficult and I was talking about this with the girls at work the other day I'm like sometimes I just want to punch my tripod I'm like stop following me because you're filming your life all the time it's exhausting like I know a lot of people think like social media as a job isn't a real job and I'm the biggest advocate that it is obviously because it's my full-time job like social media literally employs me full-time but now it's also like a part-time job after work for me too and it's a lot of work like I feel like I'm constantly thinking of like, what do I want to share with you guys? What do you want to see? How can I be better? How can I improve? How can I be different? And it's exhausting. So I feel like the reason that I'm motivated to share is just because it's brought me so many amazing opportunity, but also so many amazing people. Like there are weeks in the beginning where I was like, I don't want to wake up at 4.30. It's freaking early. But I was like, literally I'll be laying in bed and going, but they're going to say something if I don't work out this morning. So I think just having that community really motivates me to continue sharing and just like, yeah, that's, honestly, it's the community that motivates me. You guys, the literal second I was about to start spilling the juicy tea, my camera battery died. So I had to plug it in quick, but we are back and we are ready to spill the freaking tea. Okay, so I always wondered if you guys were gonna go there and we went there and I'm kind of, I'm like secretly glad we did. Um, my dating life. Am I single? Am I seeing someone? Am I secretly seeing someone? Gym crush updates, all the things about my love life. All right, buckle up because we got a lot to talk about. So starting off with gym crush updates. Let's give a gym crush update. Actually, back up. I'm single. 100% single, single well here. If you have any cute brothers, cute cousins, cute friends, you know where to send them. Um, and I'll get into my requirements because that was a question in here too. But yes, 100% single, so let's do a gym crush update. So for a while there, I was updating y'all on my gym crushes, I feel like pretty regularly, and I kind of stopped because um, I started talking to someone, and I didn't want to be talking to someone, not that it was super serious, but like talking to someone, to, and then like on the internet being like, oh my gosh, this guy is so cute about someone else. I don't know. I just feel like if I found that, I'd be like, that's not cool. So. Um, I'll give you a gym crush update now. My ultimate dreamy hat guy gym crush um, has a girlfriend or a girly of some sort who he works out with now. So he, she only comes to the gym every once in a while. I've seen him together a couple times, but they definitely, they definitely date. He was there alone today, but I just feel like backing off of that one for a little bit because I see a girl and I'm like, all right, boop. Um, the other gym crush, I don't know where he went. He literally fell off the place, face of the planet. So gym crush status right now is quite literally zero. Um, for a while there, we had creepy gym guy and he came up to me one day and like told me that he had seen me around and that I was really cute. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, thank you. That's so nice. But like, I knew in that moment, like not for me, just like, thank you for complimenting me. I'm not gonna be a bitch to your face and be like, ew. So I was just nice. Um, and from there on out, there was like two weeks where he was like doing anything he could to talk to me. Like even when we weren't making eye contact out of my peripheral, I could see him like waving at me. You guys, I was squatting at the squat rack. He fist bumped me. Fist bumped. Ugh. So um, that for me really turned me off of even like gym crushes in general because I'm like, I feel so, this feels so creepy and you make me not want to be at the gym. So I've just decided I'm not going to have gym crushes anymore. I mean, like maybe from afar, but they would never be anything I would do something about because every time a, like I have been someone's gym crush, which every time, my God, it's been twice that it's, this has happened to me. Um, I've just felt really uncomfortable and it's made me not want to go to the gym and I don't ever want to put somebody in that position. So gym crushes for me, kind of backing up on that one. Okay. I'm trying to find the the easy ones before we get into the hard ones uh, okay so my relationship status slash last relationship so single very 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 single um like i said i was talking to someone for a couple like a month-ish um we met back in january when we were out for new year's eve um and then it just was like really bad timing at that time so we didn't really we didn't talk at all honestly after we met um he i had just gone through a breakup he was just going through a breakup and then we he reached out to me again in april and we talked for a little bit but the way it ended was you know like literally just not my thing um he he was super busy and i know that excuse is dumb like i trust me i know you're no one is too busy but like 
his job and like what he was doing like I guess I gave him grace and um definitely <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, like, I think the grace was deserved in some aspects, but in other aspects, it's like, if you really wanted to come see me, you would. Um, and it ended with him basically saying, after I had said several times, like, hey, like, please just, like, don't waste my time. If, like, you're going to waste my time, I'm, like, I I'm out. Like, I just I don't have time for, to have my time wasted. And slash, like, who wants to have their time wasted? Um, basically just mean if you, you don't have the intention to come see me and come hang out with me, like, let's just end this now. Like, I'm not a pen pal. And basically ended with him going, like, getting super weird for a couple days and, like, not responding. And, like, when I feel that feeling in my gut of, like, the anxiety of, like, are you going to respond? What's going on? If something's happening? Like, that's when I know it's done. And so, like, I basically just messaged him and was like, hey, what's up? And he was like, oh, nothing. Just haven't been on my phone. And I was like, okay, bullshit. Bullshit. Um, and so then literally the next day he messaged me, he's like, hey, I need to tell you something. Like, I met someone here. And like, it's, it's fine. Like, we were kind of far apart. And so like, I get meeting someone in your town is like, you know, you do you boo. Um, but the, the real kicker for me was like, so I wasn't messaging you these past few days because I was trying to decide. And I was like, bro, this ain't the freaking bachelor. Like, if there's an A and a B, see you later. Like, I am not, there's, you needed to decide who you were gonna pick. That just made me so mad. So, yeah, last one, I wouldn't call it a relationship. It was more just like we were talking and I got excited, I would say. So that's the most recent one. So now I'm 100% single, literally not talking to a single male at all. Last, rela so my last relationship. Oh my God, this could be an entire YouTube video, you guys. I, I don't wanna say too much because I don't know, I don't know how safe I am to say too much. Um, not to be like cryptic or weird or anything, but my last relationship, so I started dating someone uh, uh, pretty much around this time last year, so June of last year, and we met on a dating app, and he lived, so it was when I was out on a girl's trip um, on like, in Rapid City, Black Hills area, which is like six-ish hours from where I live. Um, we matched on a dating app, and he just seemed like the best guy, like so nice, so genuine, like super, just like super interested, and I feel like guys... It's so hard to find guys, which just sounds sad, who are just like not self-absorbed or like only interested in their own hobbies and actually interested in you and ask you questions and whatever. So we dated from last July. We officially started dating until October. And that is like, it was a horrible, it wasn't all horrible, but the end was just really bad. And um, I kept a lot of that stuff to myself and didn't tell my friends and family what was going on. So when I broke up with him, um, everyone was freaking shocked. They were like, why are you guys breaking up? Um, I'm so surprised. I thought you guys were so happy, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, yeah, I just, I don't really know what to say about that one except for it put me mentally in a really not great place. Um, it was a very, like, after reflecting, and like looking back on it now, a very like narcissistic um, relationship that just was not good for my mental health is kind of how I will phrase that. Um, I had a lot of self-doubt after leaving that relationship. Um, just, I honestly, he made me feel like a horrible person. And I, like, I genuinely, like I had a conversation with my mom in a pizza ranch one of my favorite it's like one of my favorite memories now looking back it's so funny and i remember looking at her and i was like am i a bad person like do you think i am all these things that he said about me and she was like no like no like literally none of these things are true and it has been such a freaking roller coaster like i ended things in october and like we talked a few times between that like kind of like you do in most breakups and uh it just it's still like the fact like it's still going on this breakup and i have had to block him on like every single form of social media texting like i can't tell you it's so hard to get away and um yeah so my last relationship not good not good and, and like i feel like the more i talk to guys the more i'm like i don't know how i'm supposed to trust a single man walking the face of this earth like i just i don't trust him anymore okay so that's kind of my past what's been going on in my dating life as of 
you know, the past year. Um, let's look into the future because that's where we're going. Do I have a boyfriend? Am I looking? Do I have a boyfriend? Do I have any secret flings? Um, so no boyfriend, no secret flings. I did have a secret fling I was keeping from you guys. I apologize, but obviously for good reason because it turned out to be nothing to chat about. Um, so no boyfriend, no secret flings. Am I looking for a boyfriend? I would say yes and no. Um, I am very independent and very confident and I have no problem like approaching guys. And I think one of my, I don't know if it's a flaw, but it's just, I have no problem taking initiative. And I think that kind of gets me into trouble sometimes because then I go after guys who, not that they're not interested in me. God, that sounds so bad. I don't know how to word this and make it not sound like, <laughs> I don't know. But I'll go after guys and I'm fine pursuing them and I don't let them pursue me, I suppose. And so then I feel like I get myself into these situations where I'm like, you are really not even anything great. Like you haven't shown me any amazing qualities. I just am like pursuing you. So um, I am looking, but I would say not like super actively. I have now like turned to my friends and been like, who do you know? You have to know someone because all of my friends um, are either married, have kids, engaged, or in very long-term committed relationships. I am the only one in my friend group minus one or two people that is not in a serious committed relationship. And I am the oldest out of most of my friends. And so I'm definitely looking and it's something I want so freaking bad, but it's also something now that I've gone through kind of some shitty situations um, that I'm not willing to force and not willing to settle. Like I could have settled with my last boyfriend and I think we probably could still be together and I would totally be a shell of the person that I am and not happy at all. So I'm not willing to settle. I'm not willing to just be with someone to be with someone. I've seen too many relationships like that where I'm like, you guys are getting married, why? Are you just getting married to get married? All you do is fight and you don't seem happy. Your goals don't align, like what are you doing? So I am definitely not willing to settle in any aspect of my life, but 1000% not willing to settle in that aspect either. So next question, what are your non-negotiables slash qualities you need in a partner these have really changed over the past year and my first one is probably going to make you feel really bad for me because every time i say it i'm like this sounds so horrible but this is where we're at this is really where we're freaking at my number one is if you would not describe this person like one of the first thing that first things that comes to your head is not this word then i'm not really that interested and it's kind and i know that sounds sad it's like oh my god she literally only wants someone that's nice like gosh the bar is on the floor it is the bar is on the floor because i just dated so many guys who are at their core genuinely just not kind people they wouldn't go out of their way to help someone they wouldn't go out of their way to help me they're a little more selfish they're just like not genuinely kind people and i just need that like i described this to my mom as like i want someone to feel like a soft place to land like i have a hard day or things are going on or something upset me or even something they did upset me and i can talk to them about it and it feels like a warm hug not a cactus so for me it's someone who is kind i also need somebody who is motivated and driven like i don't i could not be with someone who is content in life at all times like content with things being average content with not pushing forward just content at all like that's just not who i am as someone who like constantly wants to try new things and like just keep pushing and pushing and going that is definitely another one um this is gonna sound so freaking vain and i i'm just gonna say it i'm kind of tall like i'm five seven and a half and so for me like height is kind of important like i could not date someone like my absolute lowest and my sister always jokes she's like you're gonna date someone who's literally a short king you're gonna end up with a short king i know it because you keep saying the opposite but i like six foot's my minimum like if you're not six foot i don't know if this is gonna work because i like to wear heels sometimes and i put on heels and i'm six foot so height is kind of a requirement i don't know but it is what it is you know you're attracted to what you're attracted to. you gotta be attracted to the person so someone who's kind someone who is passionate and motivated and driven and someone who's tall that's my non <laughs> I guess height is not a non-negotiable. It's very high on the list and, you know, it is what it is. This one's, um, I can answer this one pretty quick. Longest relationship was in college. I 100% thought I was going to marry the person I dated in college. Um, and we dated for almost two years, I think. And then my last relationship was ended in last October. And that was like four to five months. The dating scene with this emoji. Girl, I feel you. I don't know if you're single or what you're going through, but... 
it's bad it's rough it's oh it's just not fun i feel like there's just like dating apps i've done those it's the same people and they're probably thinking the same thing about me they're like dang this girl is still single what is wrong with her but the dating apps are just not it i'm too judgy on dating apps i'm like the smallest little physical feature and i'm out and i have learned that i'm just such a mannerisms person and so i've like given people a chance like gone on dates with people and like met them and they look great and they look cute and then their mannerisms are weird and i can't do it so the dating scene yeah i feel the exact same way um i love this question and how are you doing in your singleness what are your struggles so this is something so i've been single most of my 20 so i dated someone in college from age like 19 to almost 22 and then dated someone then i was single up until i was um 24 no 25 into 26 so i've been single a lot of my 20s and i will say the singleness between 20 like when i turned 24 into 26 was so hard because at that age all my friends were getting engaged or into serious relationships and then there was me and it was so hard because they were all wanting to do things with their boyfriends and hang out with their boyfriends and there is a picture i should see if i can find it i don't know if i'll be able to because it's so old but um we all went to great shops just like a golfing place here and they all brought their guys and i brought my sister because i'm like there's no effing way i'm going to this alone like i will literally cry and there's a picture and it's like all of them dating and me and I, and I even kidding you, before I left, I cried to my sister. When I got home, I cried. Like, I had such a hard time hanging out with that friend group because I, it just, it almost was like, here's everything you want shoved in your face and you don't have it. And so for so long, I struggled with my singleness and I would cry about it. And I think it made me like overly attached to guys who were just not good for me. And so I was dating like the wrong people. And so, yeah, I really, really struggled. And then I had this last relationship and I was like, holy crap like just because you are not single does not mean you are happy like at all if you're with the wrong person it is honestly more miserable and i was more miserable and so after that breakup i was just like on this hellbent mission to just find myself and fall in love with myself and i a thousand percent have like i have never been more confident in who i am as a person and who i am alone and the qualities that i bring to the table and like what i'm looking for in a relationship what my non-negotiables are what um are things that i'm looking for what are things that are absolute red flags never gonna do that again will not be happening and so i now can say i am one thousand percent fine being single and that's an amazing feeling um obviously that doesn't mean i don't want a boyfriend like i would love to have that more than anything and like someone to share my life with and like talk to and you know all the good parts about a relationship but I am also for the first time I think in my life or since like high school um fine with it just being me and I just freaking love that I can sit here and say that like it makes me so happy like I can't even tell you um like I was just thinking about this the other day like how much in the past six months of my singleness i have accomplished on my own that i know i would have never accomplished with a man in my life and oh i think i could just cry like like i'm just so proud of myself and like i know that like i'm single for a reason i think i saw a tiktok that said like god obviously has a plan for your life and if you were and like his plan obviously always is to like help you be the best person you can be like for him and to be a good steward of God. And if he knew you were going to be a better steward of him and like carry out what he wants you to do married, then you'll be married. And if he knew that you would do that better single, then he's going to keep you single. And I 100% feel like I am meant to be single right now. And I still constantly get asked the question like, when are you gonna have a boyfriend when are you dating someone are you dating someone and it used to bother me and now like my answer is like when god's ready like when he's done using me in this season for whatever it's meant to be like i just know right now i, I feel it in my bones more than i ever have that i am meant to be single and meant to just do all these amazing things on my own because then at some point someone will come into my life and it'll just fall into place and it i will have everything i love and i've built so many amazing things for myself like i own a house by myself 
that's badass. Like I move a lawn and I do all the outside yard work. I plow my driveway. Like I can do badass things. I can fix things in my house. Like, and I would never have learned to do that on my own or no, I did do it on my own. I would have never learned to do that with a man in my life. He's just like taking care of everything. And I honestly don't think I would have started social media because I use it as a place to share like an outlet and a creative outlet. And I probably would have just shared with my boyfriend or fiance or husband or whatever it is. So I, I'm doing so good now and I just feel like I don't know I really had to lean into my faith and trust God that like he has a plan I don't like his plan right now because I'm like bro I'm almost 27 like I need to start freezing my eggs at this point but um I just am fully putting my trust in him and that's where we're at that's my love life so yeah if you know anyone you got any brother's cousin's friend you know where to send them and you know my qualifications okay we're gonna end on this question because I love it and I think you guys will too is is there anything we don't know about you that we should yes so this is so funny and I always forget to tell people this because it's kind of a longer story so this is a perfect place to tell it and I feel like you guys are going to be a little shooketh um, oh first of all before I answer that my hair is done so let it all cool brush your fingers through it there she be she done any questions drop them in the comments um okay so anything you don't know about me that you should, yes. So I, this is such a fun story. I'll put up a picture too because I have so many pictures. But when I was younger, I was very dramatic and like loved the camera, loved to be in plays, like all these things. And I think I told my mom at a really young age, like I want to be on Disney Channel. Like that's who I wanted to be. I wanted to be a little Disney kid. And so she put me in acting and modeling classes starting at age like six or seven, I think. And we live in a small town in Minnesota. So we had to drive all the way to Minneapolis to like, meet with my acting coach, meet with my modeling coach. Like I had an agent, I had all these things and I was doing a ton of auditions. And one of the auditions I did was for a show called Dragon Tales Live, which if you're not familiar with the show, it's like Sesame Street Live, like those plays that would travel around that you could bring kids to and model after the show Dragon Tales. And so I auditioned for that and got the part of Max. So I was seven years old, no, eight years old, playing the role of a little boy, Max. I'll put a picture up so you can see it. And I, from um, eight to nine, traveled around the country playing Max, singing live on stage. So I can like kind of sing a little bit. Um, singing live on stage, dancing, acting um, as a little boy. And I got to ride dragons and see the whole country. And we had a tutor. Um, so we like were on a tour bus and we were to like our tutor would do school for us so i did all fourth grade from like a for, for like with a tutor basically and um yeah that was like so fun it's such a fun memory to look back on and i always forget to tell people about it but yeah i was on dragon tales live i played max um i don't know if you go on youtube there's like dragon tales live missing music mystery you can see the videos it's not me performing in them it's a different little boy but you could kind of get a like a gist of what i did but yeah, that's like my biggest secret fun fact is I played Max on Dragon Tales when I was a little kid. But all right, you guys, that was spilling the tea with Taylor. We call it like tea time with Taylor. Um, but yeah, that is my first YouTube video. I hope this gave you a chance to like get to know me a little better. Let me know in the comments below what else you want to see from my YouTube. But I'm so freaking excited to be here and just like share more of my life with you in depth. Have the absolute best day.